Today's DSLR and mirrorless cameras offer us a wide range of shooting modes that we can use in our food photography, but what's the difference between them? Which one should we actually be using for food photography and which one shouldn't we be? That's exactly what we're gonna be talking about today, so keep watching. Hey guys, it's Lauren. Welcome back to That Sage where we talk all about food photography so you can build the meaningful creative career you want. Today, we are gonna be looking at different camera modes. However, I wanna throw it out there that what I really recommend is that beginner photographers start working in manual mode from the beginning. I do understand that when you've never picked up a DSLR before, trying to set every single setting individually can be pretty daunting. So if you still don't feel quite ready for manual mode, but you're eager to get stuck in to food photography shooting, then today's video is for you. But before we get stuck in, I want to tell you why I believe that shooting in manual mode as soon as you can is the most important thing you can do for your photography. It's quite simple. The only way to have full creative control over your images is to make sure that you're choosing the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO yourself. Okay, some professional photographers will sometimes use some automatic or semi-automatic camera modes when they're capturing a very specific type of shot like sports photography or something like that, but I can promise you that those photographers would also have no problem working their camera in manual mode if they needed to. Often those photographers are using those camera modes when they need to make changes in a really quick way. But in food photography, we're working in a really slow, methodical way. Normally in a studio, we're not, we're not working with fast moving subjects, so there's really no reason not to use manual mode. So while a couple of these camera modes are suitable for shooting food photography with, the only way that you'll be gonna be able to control the shutter speed, the depth of field, and the grain is by using manual mode. So in this video, we're gonna be running through the different camera modes available to you on your DSLR, but before we jump in, let's have a quick run through manual mode. When working in manual mode, the photographer chooses all the settings themselves. And this isn't just the ISO aperture and shutter speed. This also extends to white balance, file format, whether you're gonna use flash, all of these things go together to make up manual mode. However, because when you're using manual mode, the photographer will choose a setting and the camera will stay there until it's told to do otherwise. It means that you really need to understand what every single one of these settings does so that when you wanna change something in your scene, you know what to change and how to balance it. This is the part that many photographers find intimidating, but you really needn't. Manual mode is not that scary. And I've put together a free five day e-course for you so that by the end of this week, you could be confident shooting in manual mode for your food photography. So check out the link in the description for my free five day e-course and let's jump in to our first camera mode. So as you might expect, full auto means just that, full auto. The camera is gonna make every single decision for you from the ISO, shutter speed, aperture, white balance, file format, whether flash is necessary, and you really don't have any control over the camera whatsoever. And while this may seem convenient, when you shoot in full auto, other than choosing the placement and the framing of your subject, you really don't have any creative control over the image. So. Because of that, I really don't think full auto is ever a good mode to use for food photography and kind of defeats the point of you spending so much money on that amazing camera. <coughs> Program auto differs to auto mode a little bit in that you get to choose the file format, the white balance, and you're in control of the flash. So you have a little bit more control, but you still don't get a say in the aperture, the ISO, and the shutter speed. So it's still not a good mode to use for food photography. Aperture priority is a mode that allows you to choose the lens aperture for your shot and let your camera decide on the ISO and shutter speed. 
And of course, because Aperture controls a lot more than just the exposure of the image, it allows you to retain the creative control over the depth of field in your image while allowing your camera to compensate with the correct shutter speed. From a food photographer's point of view, AV mode is probably the most useful semi-automatic camera mode because it allows you to retain that control over the depth of field when you don't really need to have a say on what the shutter speed is. However, because you don't have any control over the shutter speed, aperture priority is not very useful when you're trying to take those really fast action shots where you want something frozen in motion because you're going to need a really fast shutter speed for those shots. It's also not great if you shoot handheld because your shutter speed might just be a little bit slow and you might capture quite a bit of motion blur in your images. So therefore AV mode can be useful if you shoot on a tripod and you're not going for an action shot. So shutter priority mode is pretty much the opposite of aperture priority mode where you choose the shutter speed and the camera selects an appropriate aperture to let in enough light. As the creative use of shallow depths of fields is a really important part of food photography, you'll probably find yourself making less use of shutter priority mode rather than aperture priority mode. Nonetheless, for those times where your shutter speed becomes the more important creative decision than your aperture, that's when shutter priority might come in useful. For example, you would use shutter priority if you want to capture some flying food or a splash or a drip that you really want captured in a frozen motion. In that sense, you would pick a shutter speed that was fast enough to freeze that action and allow your camera to choose the aperture. The disadvantage is that because you don't have control over that depth of field, it might be too shallow to capture everything that you want to capture in your image anyway. So shutter priority can be useful, but it's probably not that useful. And the last mode that we're gonna look at is bulb mode. Now, not every camera has this, so if, yours, if you don't see a little B on top, that's fine. Bulb mode is basically, it's not so much a shooting mode as a way to use your camera in a creative way. So when you push the shutter, basically it will remain open for as long as you want it to. This is gonna allow you to have a shutter speed of sort of several seconds or minutes even. And it's most useful for landscape photographers who are capturing the night sky or something that needs an ultra long exposure. However, for most food photographers, bulb mode probably won't be that useful, but I don't wanna limit your creativity. If you find a good use for bulb mode in food photography, then do let me know in the comments what you do. So there you go, not so mysterious after all. And there are a couple of modes that we can use in our food photography. As I said earlier, I really do think that shooting manual mode as soon as you can is the best thing you can do for your photography. So do check out that link in the description to get access to my free five day manual mode essentials e-course and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.